And there you have it, folks. 10 months waiting for this paperwork from the Army, and I am finally starting my journey. Hey, y'all. So today, I'm going to make a video showing how I cope with gender dysphoria while in uniform. I was an active duty Army brat, and uh, all I wanted to do growing up was be part of the military and serve my country and be part of something bigger. Well, congratulations, Captain Wisebell. You are welcome to the party. Fortunately, as you may have seen, the directive from the DOD is these type of people aren't deployable indefinitely don't have to meet PT standards see in the description box if you have questions about that shall I continue I waited until don't ask don't tell was repealed so I actually joined when I was 32 my MOS is 12 alpha I'm an engineer officer and that means both the construction type of engineering building things and making bridges it also means combat engineering which is building obstacles destroying obstacles demolitions all of that fun so this is, she's in the Minnesota National Guard, a captain, right? Combat engineers. Hoyable, you guys know those folks. They do some shit you don't want to do. But yet, as we've seen, as I've mentioned, directive, stunning and brave trans people don't have to be PT standards and aren't, aren't deployable. I mean, so I guess this serves a purpose for something. I don't know. Stuff. When I became an officer, infantry and armor weren't open to females. And the combat side of engineering wasn't open until about 2016 or so. I was drawn to it just because I like the technical aspect and, again, like getting my hands dirty. And my teams have always been very welcoming. It's about what you know. It's about teamwork. It's about taking care of your soldiers. So really, as long as you show that you can build trust in your team and that you take care of your... The hell is that? <laughs> I've not been around the guard a lot, but okay. People, gender doesn't matter. All right, so gender doesn't matter. I'd say, oh, okay, whatever that means, I don't know, but just a real question. So PT standards, not a thing. And my wife just got off active duty, but she was always had a chip on her shoulder. You know, that type of officer. Wanted to look good, wanted PT as good as any other troops. That was her thing because uh, she's got pride and she didn't want to look like she was 50 pounds of shit in a 25 pound bag in a uniform, right? I mean, call me crazy. So now you're a young sergeant underneath Captain Wisewell. And you're sitting there, you're like, this is the best among us, right? <laughs> no diversity hires here. Let's continue. Hey, y'all. So today I'm hey. going to make a video showing how I cut with gender dysphoria while in uniform. So I saw this private. Maybe they threw their name tapes off because they're smart. <laughs> but I didn't know what the person was. I go, hmm, I don't know. Is it a man or a female? When Whatever, right? Gender dysphoria in uniform. Is that a thing? I guess it is, right? If you don't know, when you're an active duty soldier who is transitioning genders, you have to go by standards that align with your gender and cack and deers until that is changed. This means... How do you know when it's changed? Let's say you don't get the bottom surgery. When has it changed exactly? Who sets that standard? Again, the links below to the DOD memo that says people of this nature have a permanent exemption for PT standards. Permanent non-deployability. Of course, they'll be in the pool for promotions, right? Because my gender is a male in khaki deers, I cannot present as a female in uniform. I have a few ways that I find help me cope with my gender dysphoria while on duty, and I'd like to share them. I'm gonna be honest, they're not a lot, but they do help me. The first thing I do is wear clear nail polish. According to regulation, men are allowed to wear clear nail polish while on duty. When I'm in uniform- That's a regulation needs to disappear immediately. And <laughs> clear nail polish. I just have no words. This makes me feel a bit more feminine because my hands feel pretty when my nails are painted. The second thing I do is wear feminine scents. There is no regulation for what scents you can and can't wear. Pretty self-explanatory. It shouldn't have to be one. <laughs> that I walk up to you, I'm like, hey, Joe, how you doing? How was your weekend? I'm like, why do you smell like women's perfume? Did you get some? He goes, no, that's my perfume, bro. How do you like it? This one, smell feminine, feel feminine. I also like to put on a lip balm because... Well, it's not a gloss or anything, right. unchat lips are pretty. The last thing I like to do is put a smile on my face because there is nothing more beautiful than confidence. All right, so this soldier has got a good attitude, right? And it's not this soldier. I don't know how this process of bringing people in like this who say identifies a female and I'm a male in the U.S. Army, how it's going to be productive for us, long-term care costs, the problems we already have clearly that are upstairs. And then, again, they're not deployable or PT standards. So they're like the second class 
soldier, but yet they are lumped into the same promotion pool as everybody else. Doesn't seem like it's a great idea at all, ever. It's not working out. This concept right here doesn't seem like it's making us more lethal, making us the readiness better, any of it. Look, I know it's not a lot, but that's because there's not a lot you can do to be in regulation and present as your identified gender while in uniform. But this is what gets me through the day, and if you're a trans soldier, I hope it helps you. Hey y'all, my name is Private Johnson. I'm a soldier of trans experience in the United States Army. Today is my first day of starting HRT, so without further ado, my friend got me these- Alright, so first day of HRT, brand new private. I'm not even sure they could be in right out of boot camp, right? Now, they got hormones, and guess who's paying for that? TRICARE, right? So we are. We're paying for those hormones, the follow-up surgeries, the psychological counseling to affirm your gender, the future bottom surgery, top surgery. Of course, you need facial reconstruction surgery to align the gender. Now, all that's great for the person individually. Rock on. Now we're talking about the readiness of the U.S. Army. How effective is this as a tool to make the Army more lethal, more dangerous? It doesn't seem like it's an effective tool to me. Gumball machines to take my hormones with. And while I think they're a cute idea, they're really inconvenient, but it's still really cute, so I'm going to use it for this video. This is spirolactone to block the male hormones. This is estradiol to deliver the female hormones. Call me crazy if you're allergic to bee stings. You're colorblind. You're not going to be a pilot. If you're allergic to bee stings, you're not getting in the military. If you got diabetes, control diabetes, type 1. You're not getting in. This is a unique, we'll call it exception, that is pushed at the highest levels, nonstop. And there you have it, folks. Ten months waiting for this paperwork from the Army, and I am finally starting my journey. If you are interested in seeing how my body changes in the next few months, if you are interested in seeing the life of an active duty trans soldier, please like this video and follow for more. Wow. So you have to get some paperwork from the Army so they can clear you for all the medical costs that are associated with this. Realize we're not just talking about $30 of the hormones a month. Talking about the bottom surgery, installing some milks, right? Face surgery. And then you got to recover from the bottom surgery. The hormones are adjusting them nonstop. And then you got the psychological issues associated with this. Recently, Congressional Committee disclosed there's four times more costs associated with the mental health elements of this during the transition period while they're in. And they're always having to take care of themselves physically and mentally. And this is the State of the Union right here. I've done several videos on this, and I honestly, I hate doing this, which wasn't an issue, but it's getting more and more pervasive. The more we talk about the like MS2 moms, they triple and double down. And they say, this is the science. And you saw recently the video here, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This is my biggest goal is equity, diversity, inclusion, bottom line. So if there's 2% of the country that's Samoan Americans. They need to be flying planes, not the best people. Send me flying planes, bro. So this right here does not make us a stronger, more lethal army that I can see. Call me crazy. Correct me in the comments, if you will. And thanks for watching. Make sure to that little pesky description box. Follow me below on Locals. You can go there for free. You can support. Anyway, thanks for your time.